Hi, for this video, what I want to do is show you how to find the area and perimeter of irregular shapes. And in my drawings, the figures are not drawn to scale. And any angle that looks like a right angle is a right angle. Okay, so for these, they are rectangles is what I have. Um, so all of these angles that look like a right angle are indeed right angles. Okay, so when you have something like this, we can see that this is two rectangles put together. Okay, I'm going to split it up into two rectangles this way, mainly for when I get to the area. The perimeter, remember, is just going to be the sum of all the sides. So we need to make sure that we have all of the sides. So the three feet is talking about this side. We are missing this side right here, and we are missing this side down here. Okay, so to find this side over here, we know that the total is 8. So we know from here at the top all the way to the bottom is 8. And this part right here is 3. So to find this one, I can do 8 minus 3, which would give me 5 feet. Okay, and then at the bottom, in order to find this one, we can see that the top is 3 and this side right here is 2. So if I were to go all the way across this way, it would be 3 plus 2. So this is also 5 feet. Okay, so to go through and find the perimeter, all we would do is we would take 8 plus 3 plus 5, and I'm just going around starting at this point until I get back to the end. So 8 plus 3 plus 5 plus 2 plus 3 and then plus 5 again. Okay, so you can add this however is easiest for you. I'm going to just go through the 5 and the 5 would give me 10. This right here would be 5, so that would put me at 15, 18, and we can see that we end up with 26 feet. So the perimeter around this irreg irregular figure is 26 feet. Uh, the biggest mistake I see when students are doing a problem like this is they forget to find the missing sides and they just add up the 8, 3, 2, and 3 that were given. And so that would put you off by um, 10 feet. So that makes a difference to make sure that you find all of the sides. Now for the area, remember that area of a rectangle is length times width. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the length and width of this rectangle. Okay, and then I'm going to add to it the length and width of this rectangle. Okay, so I'm going to do 8 times 3 for the first one, and then I'm going to add to it the 2 times 3 for the second one. And so if we simplify this, 8 times 3 gives us uh, 24, plus 6 ends up giving us 30 square feet. So remember that since this is area, area is always in units squared. So we would end up with 30 square feet. So whenever you have two rectangles, um, you do want to make sure that you divide it. And like I said, you could have divided this a couple different ways. I could have divided it this way where I do this side times this side. And if I do 3 times 5, that would give me 15. And 3 times 5 this way would also be 15. And if I add 15 and 15 together, I get 30. I've seen it where students will also break it up into three rectangles and you would get the same area either way. So it's kind of just a matter of preference. All right, moving into the second example that we have. So for this one, if we break it up, we can see that this is a rectangle and a triangle put back to back. So this one does require a little more thinking because of the fact that this is a right triangle here. Okay, we are missing this side length here, and this happens to be the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So we're going to have to use some skills to help us break down how to find this side length over here. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I know that this side is 6 and this side over here is 2. So to find this side length here, I can do 6 minus 2, which would give me 4 yards. Okay, I also need this side length down here. So from end to end is 7. I know that this part right here is 4. So if I do my 7 minus 4, that would give me 3 yards. Okay, and if you've worked enough with triangles, you could automatically go to the answer here because you would see that it's a right triangle with a 3 and a 4. So it's going to be a 3, 4, 5 triangle. But in case 
you don't remember that rule. Remember that in a right triangle when you're missing a side, I could use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Um, c is always the hypotenuse, so that is what is missing. So I can say that 3 squared plus 4 squared is going to give us our hypotenuse squared. 9 plus 16 ends up being 25. Okay, so then I can say that the missing side is going to be 5. So like I said, this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle. It just happens to be a Pythagorean triple, which is a special case of a right triangle when all of the sides are whole numbers. All right, so moving on into our task, remember that we are trying to find the perimeter of the outside. So I'm just going to start up here and go around this figure. So I'm going to start with the 4 first, plus then I'm going to come down this side and get 2. I'm going to go across the hypotenuse, which is 5. I'm going to go all the way across down here, which is the 7, and then my last side would be the 6. So I would add these all together. I would end up with 6 plus 6 is 12, plus 5 would put us at 17, plus 7 would put us at 24 yards. So the perimeter of this irregular figure is 24 yards. Okay, to find the area, remember that the area of the rectangle part would be the length times the width of that rectangle. And then I have a right triangle so remember that the area is one half the base of the triangle times the height of the triangle. So let's find the information that we need in order to use this formula. So let's first talk about our rectangle. So remember our rectangle is this part right here. And so my length is going to be 4 and my width is going to be 6. Or I could say that it's 6 and 4. Whatever you want to do, 6 times 4 is the same thing as 4 times 6. Okay, so I would do 6 times 4 for that one. And then for our triangle, here's our triangle. Remember that when you have a right triangle, you do have to use the two legs. So I would do 1 half of 4 times 3. So we don't use the hypotenuse for the area. We just use it for um, the perimeter. All right, and then, so to simplify this, we would just say that area is equal to 24 plus 6, and this ends up being 30 yards squared. So the area of this ir irregular figure is going to be 30 yards squared. So when you have irregular figures, my advice to you is not break it into shapes that you know how to find the area of in order to find the area. So a lot of times that's rectangles or it's triangles. Sometimes you'll have circles involved. It, there's a lot of different things that could happen. Okay. Um, so hopefully this helped you to be able to find the area and the perimeter of irregular shapes. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you would like me to cover, please let me know that as well.